Four people dead in New York City when a fire breaks out in an e-bike repair shop. But it's not the fire that got them. It was actually the deadly gases coming from the failing lithium-ion batteries. Let's look at this incident and some experiments that were conducted that look directly at those deadly gases. On June 20th, 2023, tragedy struck in Chinatown in New York City. A fire broke out in a ground level e-bike repair shop that had apartments directly above it. The fire claimed the lives of four and it left two other people critically injured. But as you know, it wasn't just an ordinary fire because that's not really what I talk about on this channel. It was e-bikes, e-scooters, micro-mobility devices that were burning as well as a stockpile of burning lithium ion batteries. This video is sponsored by Blazestack Fire Investigation Software. Blazestack is a fully featured fire investigation case management platform that arson and fire investigators rely on to log, document, and report fire investigations. Get a free trial at blazestack.com and request a quote using the discount code STASHED. When firefighters arrived, crews were immediately assigned to search the floors above the blaze. But lithium ion batteries, they produce a highly toxic gas when they fail, and it spreads rapidly. It renders that air deadly to breathe. But by the time the smoke alarm sound, it's already too late for those inside. Tragically, the victims, they had no injuries from the fire itself, the flames. It was all smoke inhalation and they succumbed to those deadly gases. Had this been a traditional fire, they would have likely been able to escape. The fire alarm would have gave them time to notify them and get them out of that structure. But the unique challenges, the unique dangers around lithium ion batteries, it's a race against that toxic clock. In testing conducted by the EPA alongside the Ontario California Fire Department, I'll link that study in the description below, researchers intentionally failed various lithium ion battery combinations inside of an eight by eight foot shed. And that shed had a volume of 512 cubic feet. They used that shed to measure the gases and the particulates that were released. For an e-bike sized battery, they recorded carbon monoxide levels, CO levels, reaching as high as 16,000 parts per million PPM. And that far exceeds the IDLH level of 1200 PPM. Immediately dangerous to life or health. That limit right there, that's something we don't want to go over. When levels hit 12,800 PPM, the average person will die in about one to three minutes of exposure. But CO is only part of the story. The tests also detected nickel vapor concentrations around 70,000 micrograms per cubic meter, along with copper and aluminum and even lead levels that are way above the safety standards and create an IDLH environment. Seeing concentrations like this for metals is almost unheard of and it presents an additional risk. Hydrogen fluoride gas was also present, HF gas, but it's a really reactive gas, it's very difficult to measure. And once you mix that gas with all the other gases, the extreme temperatures, it often transforms very quickly. It reacts with other things. While HF is extremely hazardous, it's realistically not that big of a deal because there's so many other toxic compounds in the air. Overall, the whole mixture poses a severe risk. And let me be clear, this isn't just smoke. This is a toxic gas cocktail that's released directly from the battery cells themselves. It makes the air virtually unbreathable. But realistically, is any smoke safe to breathe? Even a campfire, you stick your face in there. Is that something you really wanna be breathing? Sure, it might not kill you right away, but it's not great. But specifically, the gas mixture from these batteries, it's a lethal combination. Thankfully, efforts in public education and new safety measures and regulations, they seem to be making an impact in New York City. FDNY is still responding to about the same number of e-bike fires this year, micromobility devices that are catching on fire, but there's been a major shift. Many of these fires are now happening outside and that reduces the risk to residents. To date, only five people have lost their lives due to e-bike fires this year, compared to the 14 fatalities they had in 2023. Any loss of life is terrible, but to see this type of reduction is definitely a step in the right direction. One thing that really surprises me about FDNY's data is that more e-bike fires occur when the device is actually not charging. This is something that's really challenging, a, a common misconception. And I even had that misconception myself. I assumed that the abuse on those batteries, charging it would make that reaction worse and actually cause these devices to fail more often. But it's not the case, it's not the case at all. But this almost sets up a worse situation because 
you don't know when these devices can fail. There's no warning signs. When they're not plugged in, you think things are safe, you have that false sense of security, and then you have a fire that can pose a significant risk, especially if that bike or that micromobility device is stored inside. This underscores the importance of safe storage, ideally having people store these things outside, away from living spaces whenever possible, especially away from the means of egress. You don't want this thing in a stairwell or a hallway blocking your only way out of the structure if it goes into thermal runaway. As we remember the lives of those that were lost, this incident serves as a wake-up call about the hazards of lithium-ion batteries and the critical importance of safe storage and handling practices.